after we've launched UEFN and we've gotten to the project browser, we can go ahead and start working with creating a project or bringing in a project from Creative and looking at the editor. As we can see here in my My Projects, I have no custom created UEFN projects. I have some islands in here. Each of these islands, we can see on the top right corner, have an icon. That icon indicates it's a creative island. And if we wanted to, we could choose one of our islands, for example, my tropical island copy, and we could create a version of it for use in UEFN. You could choose the project location, browse to where you want to put it at, and then rename it. You'll also notice there's an error here. Project names cannot contain characters such as, well, that's a blank or a space. So if I wanted to, I'd have to rename this. And now I could convert this into a UEFN island. In addition to opening up your existing projects, we can go into Island Templates. And here we have some pre-built island templates. You'll find the majority of the pre-built islands in Creative, as well as an empty level, and a simple and a blank map to get started with. Lastly, on the left, we have Feature Examples. This is where you will find some example templates that you can open up and use for learning purposes. These will be updated as time goes on, and we will be looking at some of these in a later module. In addition, if we go back to the My Projects, we have a dropdown. And this dropdown will let you change between the different teams you may be a part of so you can see the projects that are part of those teams. So let's go ahead and get started with one of the island templates. So we'll go to the island templates. I'm going to create blank so that way we have something basic to start with. I'm going to go ahead and create it in my folder. Let's go ahead and name this your first hour. I'm going to go ahead and click create. After a little bit, it's going to go ahead and create our first hour project. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, hey, mine doesn't look exactly like that. Why? Well, this is a good first lesson. As you're working with the editor, you have the ability to move windows, drag windows, close windows. And if you ever get stuck or lost, we can go up to Window, Load Layout, and then you have the option for the default editor layout. Once I chose that, we'll now be reset to the default editor layout, and we can continue from here. We're going to take a brief look at the different windows available to us. Starting at the top, we have our menus. We have our normal file, edit, and window menu, which you might find in most pieces of software. File is particularly useful because this is where we can open up levels, save levels, as well as create a new project. Also, if you didn't create a new project using one of your existing islands, you can go to New Level from Island. It'll show you the islands that you have available. And this will create a new level or a map inside of your project, rather than creating a whole new project with that island. Under Edit, we have our normal editing options, as well as our preferences. Window gives us access to our different windows. This is useful if you've closed one on accident and you want to reopen it. Tools are some common tools that we're going to use, such as your project size and if you had revision control turned on. The Verse menu is where we can explore our Verse code as well as build it and open it in Visual Studio Code. Our Build menu helps us build some of the items we may need to in our project. The Select menu is a quick and easy way to select items, not only by, for example, all, but maybe you want just the lights or stag meshes. Lastly, we have our help menu, which is a useful way to get access to the documentation as well as any other help available to you. Below this, we have our toolbar. We have a quick shortcut for saving the current level. The selection mode, it allows us to choose the different modes available to us, such as landscape, modeling, and animation. The project dropdown, this is where we can manage some project specific things as well as our team information. The create menu shortcut, this is where we can easily create actors and put them into our level, such as lights or basic shapes, as well as get access to the Fab Marketplace. This is our Verse button. Clicking on this will open the current project in Visual Studio Code. Launch Session is our button to quickly launch into our current playtest session. Next to it are three dots where we have quick options. On the far right, we have our Teams menu if we're connected to a session, as well as our Settings menu where we can change some common settings. One of the important ones is our scalability. If you are using this on a machine that maybe doesn't have enough power for your project, you can adjust it to a lower quality inside of the editor to make it perform better. Below this, we have our viewport. This is our view into the world. Standard navigation inside of the viewport uses normal first-person controls. We can hold down the right mouse button and move our mouse, and it will now rotate our view in a stationary point. Holding down the left mouse button and moving 
will allow us to go in and out like we are walking. If we hold down the right mouse button and we use our WASD keys, we can move forward, backwards, left and right. Holding down the right mouse button and using the Q and E key will move you up and down. Those are the basic controls for movement. If you happen to select an item inside of our world, let's say our player spawn pad here, it will give us a widget or a gizmo that allows us to move it in the world by default. By clicking on any one of our arrows, we can drag when we hold down the mouse button in that direction. There's also multiple ways by clicking on multiple arrows at the same time. By using the viewport toolbar, we have a quick access menu on the top left where we can turn on and off things like frames per second and different interactive modes. The next one changes the way we are looking at our current view by default perspective. But we have our different orthographic views such as top, bottom, left, and right. For example, this is our right view. I'm gonna go back to perspective mode. Next to this is the type of view mode. By default, it's lit. But we have options such as unlit, wireframe, and other different detail modes. Next to this, you have the ability to turn on and off different widgets inside of our viewport, such as I don't want to see decals. I can enable or disable them. Maybe the atmosphere is causing a current issue and I need to debug something. Next to this is our time of day preview. It's a slider where we can drag back and forth to change the current time of the day from zero to 24. That is only enabled if you're using the Fortnite time of day setup, which I'll show you how to change later. To right of this, we have our project size preview. We'll have to cook this first in order to actually view any information. Our quick shortcuts for selecting objects, translating objects, rotating objects, and scaling them. You can also see at the end, they all had hotkeys, Q, W, E, and R. For example, I have my item currently selected and it's in the translate mode. If I wanted to rotate it, I can change to rotate mode. And using the widgets, I can now rotate that object. Next to this, we have the local or world space translation. If something is angled a certain way, this will allow it to change between the local and world space. Next to this is surface snapping. Are we going to snap to surfaces and how far away? Next to this is our grid snapping. By default, if I go back into movement mode and I move this item, it's going to move smoothly. If I was to turn on snapping, now it's going to snap in 32 units. Or if I was to adjust this, it would snap even bigger. Next to this is the snapping for rotation. I currently have it off and you can see we can smoothly rotate. Turn it on, I can now snap our rotation to 90 degrees or any other value you'd like. Next to this is our scaling snapping, enabling it or disabling it, as well as the option for the snap amount. Next to this is how fast our camera will move. We can see this is the speed of my camera at four. If I change this down to one, our camera will now move much slower. If you have the right mouse button down and you're moving, you can scroll in and out with your mouse and it will change the speed relative to that value you have. Right now I'm at the max speed I can move for one. If I was to adjust this to say something like four, you'll see I'm moving much faster, but I can use the scroll wheel to scroll down and I will now be slower. And lastly, we have our different viewport modes. Clicking on this will change us into four viewport mode. And we now have four distinctively different viewports we can adjust the settings on. Maybe I want this one to be unlit and I still want it to be perspective mode. This one could be, for example, left and it could be in lighting mode. And you can change them as you need to. You can click that button again to go back. In the top left, you do have options for more layouts. In the top right, we have our outliner. Our outliner tells us all of the items that are inside of our world. So for example, we can see I have three grid planes an island settings, two spawn pads, some world data layer information, as well as a level bounce item. And if I was to add something new, for example, our create menu and adding a point light, dragging, dropping it in, we can now see we have a point light. All the information for the items in our outliner are in our details panel below it. This is where we change things such as the light color and intensity on our light, or in the case of our player spawn pads, maybe which team it's going to be on. The world settings, if we go to window, world settings, can adjust the individual settings for the map we're currently on. The most important one in here is going to be whether we're using the time of day system. If we were to disable the time of day manager, you now see we have a blank map and we no longer have the ability to change our time of day. And our last item is our content browser, which we actually can't see. If we click on content drawer in the bottom left, it's gonna pop up. 
This is going to give us all of the assets inside of our project. For example, inside my first hour content folder, we can see our map and our game feature data. We also have access to the Fortnite folder where we can have props, galleries, and devices that come with Fortnite for use in our islands, as well as an epic folder, which gives us some default materials and textures we might want to use. There is a hotkey, it's control spacebar. If we want to hide or bring back our content drawer, or we can choose to dock it in the layout. And now the content browser will show up. You'll notice as I click and drag on any of the borders, we could resize any of our items. We can also click, hold, and drag any of our panels and move them into different parts of our world. We can even dock them into our viewport and make new setups. And again, if you ever get lost, go ahead and go back and reset your layout. We're gonna go ahead and continue from here and we're gonna look at content next how we can get content into our world, how we can work with that content, and how we can use it.